Nicole Strickland. I have been fascinated with the unknown and paranormal realms since childhood. After a profound experience with my grandmother's spirit 20 years ago, I have been on a quest to observe, study, investigate, and communicate with the afterlife and beyond. It's been an ongoing journey of exploration and discovery, one that has taught me how mortality and the spirit world are forever bonded through the bales of time. Good evening, everyone. I hope everyone is doing well this Thursday evening. No Realm of Darkness to recap tonight. They have the night off. They will be back next week. And of course, welcome to another night of exploring the connection between life, death, and beyond right here on the Afterlife Chronicles on WLTKDB.com. Of course, I am your host, Nicole Strickland. If you haven't followed the show already on its socials, do that with its handle at WLTKDB. And of course, the Afterlife Chronicles at Afterlife Chronicles and beyond and afterlifechronicles.podbean.com. We have a fantastic show for you tonight with uh, a fabulous guest uh, that, and I've actually been on his show uh, as, as well. He has two shows now, which we'll talk about before I bring him in. Just a couple of quick announcements as usual here. So a happy, happy heavenly birthday to my beautiful cats, Max and Kaylee. They would have been 19 years old today, but they are enjoying their time and their new life beyond. And then, of course, Haunted Voices Radio with host Todd Bates. And I'm very lucky to be hosting, co-hosting with him as well. That returns uh, September 16th, if I have the date wrong. It's Friday, September 16th. Let me double check that because... Let's see here. That is right. Friday, September 16th with Caden and Alyssa Alyssa Mask. And then, of course, on the 23rd, Henry San Miguel joins us there as well, which uh, leads me right into, again, like I always say, the OC Paracon. It's coming up October 1st and 2nd at the Sonesta Hotel. Very honored to be speaking there along with Paranormal Pete of uh, Paranormal Pete Show here on the network. And then, of course, uh, the Midwest Spirit Fest that is hosted by Andy Howell and Dale Katzmerich, and I believe it's Thornton, Illinois. So any of you that are in that area that would like to attend, it is on Sunday, October 16th. And then let's see what else. Uh, The Fringe Project, the book project that Marie D. Jones and Denise Agnew and I are working on. So our deadline has been extended to September 30th. The book, it's an anthology, uh, Women on the Fringe, Groundbreaking Women in the Paranormal, excuse me. And so that will be published by Black Spot Books in spring of 2024. Okay, let's not waste any more time. I see our clock is chiming there. Just try to ignore that. Hi, Linda. Nice to see you there. We had Linda Myers and Mary Bethune on last week. That was a fantastic show, except for my internet glitch, except for that. But anyways, let's introduce tonight's guest, uh, Greg Koss. He is a multifaceted in paranormal investigation and research. He is involved with Shadow Hunters Paranormal Investigations and Events. He hosts the Shadow Hour with uh, Greg Koss. And then his new show that he will discuss too tonight is Metaphysical Crossings, which is coming quite soon. So, Greg, welcome to the show. How are you doing tonight, my friend? Welcome, myself, actually (laughs) you know nicole it's lovely to be on your show and you look beautiful as ever oh and it's 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 great (laughs) you know what it's great to be in this seat for a while yeah it is and i had such an honor being on your show that was a fabulous experience so now you know the tables are turned i'm returning the favor sharon has joined in hello um yes i do yes she's like hello you have a great guest absolutely So we have an hour tonight, of course, you know, get you back on for future episodes, of course. But, um, you know, I'm just going to start out. I'm sure a lot of listeners know you, you know, know your history. But in case there are a few that don't, when did all this start for you? When did your interest in the paranormal start for you? And how did that all happen? I was 10. It was Gettysburg. It was Gettysburg. We happened to be at an area known as Reynolds Woods that at the time I had no idea where it was or anything because I was too young. But 
myself, my father, my sister, my uncle were all, my father was one of those guys. When you went into a place that was that big, the first spot he could pull into, he pulled into, and that's where you stayed the whole day. Yeah. You know what I mean? Back yep. in the day. And we were there and it wasn't too long before the winds seemed to be changing and they were going off and on. And on a period where the winds would start to come in or go out, I can't remember, remember specifically, but one of those two things happened and we started hearing the sounds of cannons and muskets and uh, overhead actual incendiaries, uh, guys screaming, horses screaming, you name it. And there wasn't very much out of an actual battle that we did not hear over a period of approximately four hours. And it went on and on and on, and we'd have little breaks, and then it would start up again, and it was like crazy, absolutely nuts. And I can remember going back, and my father talked to one of the, uh, how could you say, you know, the con the conservationists or the people that actually ran the park. Back then, they weren't even really the same as they are today, but... Uh, my dad walked up to him and started talking, and I went up to the side of the car just to listen to what he was saying. And, and you know, he says, "Well, there was, you know, is there something going on out here?" You know, and the, you know, back then in that day, there were no reenactments. Right. There was no, there was none of that back then. This is just. And so he finally told my father, "It happens all the time." And when I got in the car, I was told, point blank, you remember that when we get home, you mentioned this to no one. Oh, wow. You know, and we were, so... I was, we were given the old one, too. And uh, that, it, that in, involved me quite a bit because after that, it was like, Oh, that means that I have to look into this more. Exactly. Exactly. It's almost you like know. a blessing in disguise. So you so after 10 years old, when was the next time that you visited the grounds? I didn't get back there until now, uh like four or five years ago. Oh wow. I I, I did not even know where I was until I started putting the pieces of the puzzle together. And they had made it now so that it is very, very close to what it looked like when the battle happened. So if there were trees that were growing in between or anything like that, they were taken back down according to the photographs. I see. So it's it's pristine in the sense that it's almost the same as it was back in the day. I... I was really interested in finding out, and I didn't really put it together until day three, the day we were going to be leaving, and we were there at the end, and I can remember looking at these woods again and thinking, well, I saw a picture from when it was, you know, when I was a kid, and it showed this split rail fence in front, and there was this big you know where that ex explanation it's like that big plaque like that shows things and that's where general reynolds died major general reynolds who was the highest commanding man on the field and he died on day one wow. and they were trying to they were trying to get him down off his horse and he refused and he took a bullet and he died and so when we went back we went through this, you know, to have Dale Kazmarek as your group leader on an investigation. If you're to go, Nicole, you have to go with Dale. <laughs> he has because been, yeah, he's been asking me <laughs> like, like for years now. You he need to is get to like, Gettysburg. He is like super guide man. Yeah. Okay. He is Mr. Information. He can take you to almost every spot on the field and he could talk to you for hours. Yeah, he's done so many investigations and all the different hotspot areas, but I imagine right. 
some of the lesser known areas. Now, when you first went, when you were 10, when you drove up in your car, before you started hearing the phantom cannons and all of that, did you have any like intuitive senses at all when you were there? Did you feel differently when you drove up? I I was drawn, I was drawn to the fence. I yeah. remember that now, okay. but that I, I was a kid and you right. climbed the fence. So, you know, whether that has anything to do with it, but, you know, and then going back to this last time, we ended up, we ended up on day, the night of day two, uh, Rosemary Eileen Galley was with oh, us. Oh, yes. And her She's husband, wonderful. And she was with us for all three days. So it was great to have her. And we all got together at the top of the triangular field. It was the road and then the triangular field went down and it's probably 250, 300 yards all to, to the bottom. And there's woods on the one side and that's where the Confederates came out and started charging up the hill to the Union troops that were at the top of the hill behind these small rocks and they were just picking them up left and right. I, when I got there, I thought, no, I'm going halfway down. And Rosemary, she continued on down past where I went, but I found a piece of granite and I found some rocks around it. And you could tell where the, you can see where the bullets had, had ricocheted off the rocks. And they're still, yeah, I imagine, of course, they're still and there. This was, wow. Yes. And it was like probably 40 feet from me to the woods. And I pulled out my spirit box and I had my eddy meter out and I had a K2 out. And I started just talking. And I said, and this is before, this is at the beginning of my, what I would consider my real spiritual awakening. I started talking to them and I told them that I was a veteran too. And, you know, I would love, I would love for you guys to come out and just say hi or even embrace me, touch my hand, whatever you would like to do. And it got started getting darker. And as that happened, they were doing a spirit box session at the top of the hill. And you know how noise carries. Oh, absolutely. It, it was Dale and it was some members of the group. And you could hear the ch -ch 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 -ch, And then you would hear dead like that. And somebody would go, it said head. And somebody else would go, no, it didn't. It said dead. And they start, you know, and I'm going, oh. That was my beginning as far as my work with headphones and Estes that came upon me about six months later. And yeah, we're going to, we're going to get right in. I mean, this, it's great how things happen in unison. You know, it's like it, it had to happen that way to almost feel your, your interest. And it, it just, well, it's, it's all synchronicities. It is. Every I part, was just going to say, yes, every totally. part of it. And, and it got to the point where they, I felt them come out. And I am dead serious about this. I could feel them. They oh, were there. And I there know. weren't just two or three. There were a bunch of them. And it was like that made my whole entire trip. And I don't cry. But if I was to cry, that would be one of those times that I would embrace them because they were all a lot younger than myself and they were all gone and all they had were the woods and the battlefield. So, but getting back to the Estes, I didn't even have headphones then. And I had put to, taken my spirit box and put it away because I didn't want any more of this contamination. Right. And, and work that was going to be involved with doing stuff like this where I could not hear what was going on. So we got into this point where I went ahead and I got a set of headphones and I started doing this. And at that same time, there's two guys, Connor Randall and Carl Pfeiffer from the Stanley hotel in Estes, Colorado, 
and I started watching their videos and I'm going, that's the answer. This is the answer. Now, if I could find some way to record it too, which I have, but I haven't, I still can hear it and questions can be asked and you can provide the answers and you listen to the sweeps, AM or FM, forward or reverse, different speeds, and you can concentrate yourself on what they're saying. Yeah, the, I've used the Estes method a few times, and it, it's it's unique in the sense that I think it 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 eliminates a lot of bias, which is great when doing any sort of you know ITC or EVP, and it, it just it, it allows you know you to kind of get attuned to your sensitivity. So for those that may not know or have used the Estes method, walk us through exactly how you set up for it and exactly what it is from start okay. to Okay. What, what we would do is we would have another person with me that would record the answers. Right. That I would be giving from what I would be hearing. And I start out with a prayer. I go from a prayer to my intention, yes. which is that I am to be used as the conduit for the communication between the spirits and myself and the spirit box. And from that point, uh, you have a little, this is blindfold. like a blind, mm -hmm. blindfold. It says, do not disturb on it. But I usually use that when the grandkids are around. <laughs> but I have that, and then I have a box. And what you do is you plug your headphones into whatever box you have. Uh, the plain, the basic one that's the simplest around to use would be this one here, which yeah. is commonly referred to as an SB7. Yeah, That's I have that. I use that one. Seven. Good. And I have other boxes that I use too. Most of them are from Katie Stafford uh, in Sp Supernatural Inc. Uh, the reason I use his boxes is I like where they're, it actually will only pick up the sounds. Right, it, right. It eliminates the white noise. Right, exactly. Okay, so that makes it a little easier for you if you've been doing a bunch of sessions. I don't recommend anybody doing a session over 20 minutes. No, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, that's and, exhausting for both parties. And, well, I, I got caught where my phone went off, and we were doing a triple Estes where we had three different – we had – Minnesota, and we had Missouri, and we had us, and my phone went off, and it was my timer, and we were going twenty five minutes. No, it was it was it was it was up in New Han uh, not New Rhode Island, and that oh, wow. was big Bigfoot and the Bunny, Chris Carr and Kristen uh, Johnson who are close friends because they're in my loop as far as the people so that they're not doing it every week. But let's get back to the basics before we get into that. Anyway, I would, I would set this up in the respect where I would turn it on. I would set my speed. A good natural speed for this box is right around 200. That's, and that's a sweet spot. Yes. Yeah. You could say, you know, sometimes I'll use 250. Yeah. But I in, I like to use reverse mode too because it cuts out on some of the words that you would have bleed through on the radio. Exactly. So that's why I use this box. On the other ones, I can eliminate almost all of that. And uh it's 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 pretty cool, but I do this one and when we set up our sessions, we always go ahead and start out exactly what I said before with the prayer and go through all that before we even start. Most of the people like myself, um, you got uh, Chris and Kristen, you got you got uh, Katie, Katie Stafford, Katie, his wife, she does it. We have um, we have. Uh, 
Greg Bakken from up in Minnesota, and he's on Minnesota Ghost Box. He does exceptional work with a box, too. His box is on Sunday nights on his show. He does it at 10 o'clock, and he does this hour of spirit box live, and it's it's all it, – there's, there's nothing in between. It's just a spirit box, and he's got a speaker. But anyway, that's the way we do it, and we set up our time. Uh, normally, if I'm in an environment where I have somebody with me, I don't have to worry about timing myself. They time me themselves. Uh, I put the blinders on. I have the I have another cord that goes from my SB7 to my headphones, and I literally turn on the machine. I have everything preset on it, as far as the speed, the sweep everything down the road and I just start to go. And you are your preferences on that SPSB seven AM or FM, or do you use a combination of, both? I use, I use FM mostly I've been, since we start metaphysical crossing, I haven't gone back to AM at all. Yeah. Now, Danny now, said, Hey, Greg, long time. No, see, just wanted to flash that real quick. We do have a couple of questions, okay. but finish what you were saying. Sorry about that. So, so we would do that that way. Okay. When we first start, when we first started out, we were doing them just literally one person, and there were some people that didn't seem to pick it up. And I don't think it was them. I think it was their intention. Intention does play a big part of it. You know, two of my friends, uh, they're uh, a, a part of uh, American Spectral Society. You might know them, Nicole Tito and Lisa Crick. They use the Estes a lot. Okay, as well. I know Lisa. Yeah, uh, great, great people. So two questions here. So Facebook user says here, or asks, what's the name of the spirit box that eliminates white noise? The one that There's you... A, there, there is a feature on a Nanocam S that goes from a regular sweep mode where you would pick up the white noise. There's there's like a switch on the side of the box. And where, I'm sure that, where do you, that, where have you purchased that's, that? That's from Supernatural Inc. Okay, okay. And, and then, you look them up on, I don't have a, a link to them right now, but it's Katie Stafford. And he's got yeah, that okay. new show that's coming out now. And he's with, um, uh, oh boy, now, now you got me. Now you stuck. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dave, Schra Dave Schrader. And uh, there's the psychic medium that was on his last show. Cindy Caza, probably. And Maybe I'm there's there's the three of them now that have a new show, so that's just coming out. Right. Okay. And then of course so, it's nice to see here, uh, Randy Liebuk. Now, hi, Randy, and I hope you're doing well. Nice to see you. Uh, you mentioned this earlier, but right. uh, he asks, where does the name Estes Method come from? Is that the name of the person who first developed the technique? No, it's the location of where they were working at the time that they developed it. And that's from the Stanley Hotel in Estes, Colorado. So that's why they came up with that. Right. And they were they were they were really punching it out. I mean, they were really going to town. And if you watched, if you get an opportunity to go to their videos. I have seen some of them. I watched all of them and kind of Randall is just, he's uncanny. He is just, he, his mind is fully opened. I, I picked this up for myself as being part when I said my spiritual awakening. And now it's part, you know, I have, I'm working on my mediumship and, and all this. And now I have this side channel or side road from that where I am actually trying to speak with my guides. So what happened was on, there's one little video that you can see that shows that, uh, it shows the portal at the end of the table. And I was questioning it and I kept, I kept on questioning it, questioning it. And I had it being recorded at the same time, I wanted to go ahead and see if I could pick up anything behind it. So I was shooting shots. And 
I kept on asking Hoppy, and Hoppy's my my guide. And everybody, you guys don't have any idea who Hoppy is, but way back in the day, that's Hop Along Cassidy. Oh wow! That's, a, that's how wild this gets, and this is all part of my journey. So Hop Along Cassidy, Hoppy, I said, "Hot, are you here, Hoppy?" And normally I'd have him and my other two guides clean clear the room or take the people that are talking, and this is how I picture it as being a room, and you get these voices. And some of them are mumbling or you can't hear them as well, and I'd ask them to come to the front of the room, and they would go, you know, they would, wouldn't say anything, and I'd say, Hoppy, you know, Trevor or Sam, I says, can you bring them to the front of the room? Just to improve the sound and the communication that they're making. But there were a lot of times that there were other people there or spirits that were there or ghosts that were there that would not let them come forward. And I would pick that part up too. Uh, you all know the difference between a ghost and a spirit. And, you know, my, my mentor, Scotty Rourke, you know, a spirit, a ghost is, is a, is a ghost. If you go ahead and cross over to the light, to the other side, you become a spirit and then you can transition back and forth where the ghost is here. And he has to stay here until he crosses or decides to. And so that's where that part was. I, uh, I, I don't think I've lost my train of thought too much, have I? No, I wanted to ask you, in your opinion, using this method a lot, when should someone not attempt an Estes method? Is it the similar to other types of methodology? You know, if they're not grounded or if they're, you know, maybe preoccupied, you know, physical illness, things like that, or are there other, other reasons that you suggest for well, someone not to attempt to use it? We were at, for our school in Iowa, and we were going to do a double Estes downstairs in the boiler room, and it was me and Mike Wright. Kathy Para and in uh, oh, yeah, Kathy, yeah. Barbara were there and they would be asking the questions. And we went under, and there was about two times before this that it seemed that that we started picking up something above the white noise. Like a whole different band was coming through. And the only way I can describe it, it was a ticking. And it was a ticking and it kept on, you know, no matter what you were, it was like taking you away from what you were really hearing, if you know where I'm going with this. And then it, in the process of doing that at for our school, Mike Wright had, had heard it before with me the time before when we were back in Illinois and he sort of freaked and he pulled out and I pulled out with him and it was like, well, you know, I wanted to hear it again and hear what was going on. I'm sorry about that dinging. No, no worries. I can't even hear it. We okay. actually, you know what, on that note, we do need to take our one and only break for the night. So of okay. course, tonight's guest is Greg Koss. We've been talking about his journey in paranormal investigation, experiences at Gettysburg Battlefield, and of course, uh, instrumental transcommunication, specifically the STS method. We will be right back, guys. Stay tuned. Hi, I'm Pete Orbea. Hi, this is Nicole Strickland. My name is Hero. My name is Sean Clem. Hey everybody, Cleet Keith here, author of Ghost of Greystone Beverly Hills. 
I'm excited to invite you to the OC Paracon, which is going to be the first week in October. Now that's just some of the people you're going to meet at Orange County Paracon. That would be Anaheim's first ever paranormal conference. I'm Henry, the organizer and also the host of Paranormal Perception, inviting you to meet those people that you just saw. You'll meet everybody, including some guests, some people that we haven't even announced on the website. It's going to be a surprise. Everything, info, tickets available on that website, OCParacon.com. Com. Hope to see you to kick off our favorite time of the year in Anaheim at OC Paracon. Take us with you on the go and download the new WLTK DB mobile app. Search the App Store and Google Play under WLTK DB Talk Radio. Download free today. The unexplained. It's all around us and usually supplies more questions than answers. You need answers. You need Cross Country Paranormal. Founded by Benjamin Young, CCP seeks to train, educate, and mentor anyone that has a passion for the paranormal. CCP is building a network of teams and investigations across the country, and all experience levels are welcome. Learn more about CCP on their website, ccpinvestigations.com, where you can find frequently asked questions, check out their equipment, follow their latest events, and of course, shop. Visit them now at ccpinvestigations.com. That's ccpinvestigations.com. Cross Country Paranormal. All are welcome. All are family. Thirty-two minutes past the hour. You're tuning right back into the Afterlife Chronicles right here on WLTKDB, uh, WLTKDB.com right there. Of course, I'm your host, Nicole Strickland. Tonight's guest is Greg Koss of Shadow Hunters Paranormal Investigation and Events and host of the Shadow Hour with Greg Koss and his new show, Metaphysical Crossings. Of course, we have been talking about his journey in paranormal investigation and research and ITC, instrumental transcommunication, specifically the Estes method. Of course, if you missed the first half hour, don't worry, it will be archived for you. So let's segue back into ITC here. So I'm one of these that, you know, I'm always thinking, okay, you know, you know, how does the living world, how do we influence and how do we contribute to you know paranormal activity and paranormal phenomena and i'm always trying to think about you know the, the bias aspect and the power of suggestion what are some things that you do with the estes method to try to reduce that that bias going in you mean as far as my respect is concerned well not just that but like let's say i'm let me just it's hard it's hard I'm, I'm thinking of something i'm trying to phrase it let's say i mean have you ever had situations where let's say um a person is asking questions and the you have the receiver so the one that's you know blindfolded and all of that and in hearing the scanning go through the, de the device i'm wondering if there are instances where maybe they hope a certain answer or a certain word is said and then that word is said i mean is it is that an example of maybe like psychokinesis there or is it really just coincidental and you know a ghost or a spirit happened to answer the same word that you know maybe they were thinking i don't know we had instances i've had it happen twice now where there's an actual bantering two people all on the Estes together, and they actually start to banter back and forth to each other. No. I have no idea they're doing it. Oh, wow. And I have that on film. But oh, it, I would like to, it, it like was, to see it, that. It was like, I think it was a good 20 minutes, and that was from Old South Pittsburgh Hospital. Oh, that, oh, so many people I know have been there. It's literally, I haven't yet gone. It's in the top five places that I want to visit just because of all the amazing things I've heard. And, and I know you've investigated there. Um, so I, I imagine you've done a lot of Estes experimentation there. Have you found too with, with the, the Estes that are, are there patterns where there seem to be more answers to certain questions that are asked, if that makes sense? 
just at different locations. It doesn't have to be the same. It, location. it, it would depend on who was asking the question. Right, that too. I, exactly. Right. See, so, yeah, that's you know, a good that, point. that would determine. That would determine a lot because there's there's certain people that seem to turn them on. The spirits. The intention, More, or the even, or even the channeling aspect. Exactly. Yeah. Which which comes into play ama amazingly. Uh, I did I did have a situation, and I just want to before I say that, I just want to mention Danny Botts, who was posted something before. He's a member of Shadow Hunters, and so is Sharon Moretz, and you know. Uh, Nick Sarlo is the founding, the founder. Of, he's the he's the main guru for the group, you know. And I still am with Dale Kazmarek, you know, and, and enjoy that group tremendously. So, but going back to that, it seems that when I mentioned the bantering, that is something that comes into play. You can almost feel it. It's going to happen. And we have no idea it's actually happening at the time, but you get this sort of uh, charged, more more charged than if you went into a room and you had three, three spirits in it. It gets charged. Uh, it, it seems to carry it. I don't know why, but it does, just does. And I'm not... You know, I'm no different than you. I'm no different than anybody else that's watching this program. I just do it because I love to do it. And I love to to hear the answers. And I love to channel it, too. And it just happens. Absolutely, and, yeah. And, and, you know, when you get done and, and you're done with the session, it's, you know, you have to thank them. And that's probably one of the most important parts to me is the fact that then they do want to talk to you more. That's a good point. That's a, that's a very salient point because I think a lot of people forget that, you know, uh, the respect aspect and just the common courteous, you know, the courteousness, if you will. Uh, Allie Shriver, my team's co-director, dear friend, like on our tours and, and investigations and whatnot, we always say, you know, it's like the golden rule, you know, treat others as, as you treat yourself and you're going to get a lot more with that, you know, with that, just that common courtesy. So that's, that's a really important point. Um, awesome. Super awesome. You have, now you shared, I think I have a video. You said it's from post town elementary, right? And yes. And now so, it, it originally was, 37 minutes long <laughs> and honest not... to god <laughs> and now it's yeah but the point about it is was when i originally looked at it i was trying to find something and once again i don't know why but i went through it minute by minute and i looked back and i saw the foot of the doll was sticking out and then when i went a little farther there was more foot sticking out and i went whoa wait a minute and i went back to the beginning and you could hardly see her foot because the uh the um the the uh the what am i what am i trying to say the eddie plus was on the chair now, this is a chair, a plastic chair in an old classroom, and the doll is sitting behind it. Everybody in the group was in there doing, doing, doing what they do, and I was trying to film this, and I sort of stopped it, and I started it back up as they were leaving, and I had picked out the doll. I don't know why I picked out this doll. I thought it was the prettiest doll there. And I thought it would attract somebody. So I put it there, started it up. And when this started happening on my review, I ended up going back. I think it took me about an hour and a half. I had no way to really know how to record it. This is recorded off my phone. 
okay. in, in front of my computer screen. That's so was why there it, audio to this or no audio? There's no audio. That's what I thought because I didn't hear it unless there was something glitchy with but my laptop. The, that... the point is that there's nothing, there's nothing moving it except whoever it was that was trying to get to the Dow and was trying to push the eddy meter out of the way. It went from 37 minutes to what is it? Four? Four. Three? Yeah. Some, I think it's a little, it might be a little less than that. Now, did you physically see the doll moving and the eddy me meter being pushed back or it's just over time you, mean, you noticed that it was. You mean, you mean when it was, when it was live? Yes. No. No. Okay. No, I did not care. I didn't see anything until I got home and I was reviewing my footage. Wow. No fans or anything like that. That could have there done was nothing in that room. No. Okay. It's, it was called the doll room. Oh, it interesting. Was filled, it was filled with dolls. Yeah. Interesting. Awesome. Let's play that video. If okay. we have that handy. Uh, so it's on the right. If I remember, it's on the right kind of right side of the you'll video. see you'll see the doll sitting on on the i think it's an orange chair awesome so we'll go ahead and cue that up here we go here there okay, we go okay that's that's where she is now you see way down where are we at this is them getting ready to leave okay okay so this is basically the end of their little thing and i already had the doll there I don't know and why I thought it was a bear. Jeez, hello. And I went back in. I went back in because they had touched it. And I wanted to make sure everything was cool. Yeah, I see and the then, EDI meter there. So you could barely see that foot. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, now, I do. Now, now it already moved once. You see the foot now. And what I'm doing is I'm skipping across the video until it, there it goes again. Oh, that's bizarre. And now it's going to go again. Oh, you and see it, it actually move the meter moving. Yes. Yeah. And the meter, the meter has got a light meter. It, it's got a, it's got a rubber case on it. And yeah. That's, an a, plas one, that's a plastic chair. So it no actually vents, moved. Nothing, it actually, no nothing, nothing, nothing would move it. You know, what? really, it's, it's, I don't know the distance was right around a foot, I want to say, of total no. movement. But no you vibration, see, nothing like that, nothing. that could maybe do. No, there's oh nothing there. Oh, my gosh. But that was, that was very, very interesting. That, could, and so what are the, so it's called the doll room, interestingly. What are the yeah. claims in this specific room? I'm wondering if other people have had... Okay. A Similar lot of children. There's there's toys in the room. There's people like Nicholas uh, from Shadow Hunters filmed a train that was going down a track. Oh wow! By itself. Uh, this, of course, was taken almost six years ago. Mine. Wow, I'm wondering if it if it perhaps was someone trying to get the doll. Yes. But yet, but the meter moving is. Yeah, just... well, they were moving the meter out of the way. Exactly. They well, didn't yeah. know what the meter was. So, total time, well, you, because you had to go back, but I'm wondering total time in terms of seconds or minutes of the meter I, actually moving, if, or was it just you, over 37 you, minutes randomly? You know, the meter would move here and then maybe five minutes later move again. No, you could see the time, you could see when it jumps. It has the time in there. Okay. So it was it was pretty cool. That's a lot I of energy. I haven't, play, I haven't played it. Well, yes, it was. I agree. And the kids there have a lot of energy. That is the only thing they have. What have your audio experimentations uh, resulted in there? Have you had names I, of kids and, and things like that? As as far as that end of it's concerned, I haven't really gone into it like that. Not very much at all, because everybody else usually does that end. There's something really special about interacting Picking with up. and communicating with, with younger spiritual energies and, and kids. It saddens me in a way to know that, you know, they 
they couldn't live longer and experience life like us adults, they, but it's it's very special to encounter. They um, like your little they like your little fingers. <laughs> I had an Seriously, experience. If you're, if you're walking, <laughs> yeah. if you're walking, we were walking, Sharon and I were walking down this hallway and actually the tingling started. Yeah. And and they were grabbing my little finger and then they grabbed Sharon's. Oh, that's so special. I had an experience once on the Queen Mary where um, I was actually in the, uh, I forget where I was, but I, I felt, and I had a ring on my little finger too, and I felt someone or something trying to pull on it. It was a very odd feeling. So, sometimes, awesome some, stuff. Sometimes you feel, you feel blessed and, you know, there's always a reason why that things like that turn out because they're they're driving you in that direction more. You know, like Ross Ellison from up there in Seattle. Uh, I know Ross. He's a great guy. He's another he's another great guy. You know, and I had him on the show, and he's done some fantastic things up there too. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, some great people in this field. Let me tell you. Yeah. Um, so we have about 15 minutes. I want to get to your shows because obviously, you know, your, your shadow hour, a lot of people know that, but your upcoming show, or have you already had an episode on it? Metaphysical Crossing? No, we've been, this is season two. For oh my gosh. Hello. I'm behind. Hello. Do you that's, know that's, o- that's okay. That's okay. So we, what's that we, all about? That's exactly what we were just talking about. That was, that's all ITC and it's all, Estes or Gensfeld, we're bringing Gensfeld into it just to oh, see. Oh yeah, very similar. Just to see what's going on with it, where that's really attached with the remote viewing, yeah. or with using a God's helmet. Sensory deprivation, yeah, the Gansfield experimentation. Yeah, if you guys projecting. haven't, yeah, read about that. Look it up. Gansfield experiments, very fascinating. Okay, that's awesome. So you do live. We Estes do live Estes. And we do them, um, you know, it's, a, it's once again, it's important to have everybody on the same, on the same wavelength. Absolutely. You know, so if you do last, uh, last night, we did just did a double. So it was myself and Greg Bakken, and, and we have two moderators that copy our answers down besides them being on the show. Right. But they copy our answers so I can review them. And they also go ahead and ask the questions. So in our comments of the people that watch the shows, they have questions and they're asked. And then we look for correlations as far as the responses are concerned. Oh, that's fantastic. I I need to catch up. I didn't. I, hello. I need to do my homework first. I was thinking it was upcoming. Oh, no, no, that's, that's, already. You know what? <laughs> it was it happened it happened like like a speeding train yeah i imagine and, and it and it hasn't stopped yet and the remote and, you know, aspect too is neat as well cuz you can employ that with it of course well you know i would suggest for anybody that's watching though to make sure that they've studied it or at least taken a course in remote viewing Absolutely. Before, before they start to go ahead and try to do anything like that with a Gensfeld. Because oh, yeah. a, Gensfeld, a Gensfeld can freak you right out. It yeah, I actually you. recently read a very interesting article on it. And uh, to ex- experiment with that, as well as Estes, I think is, you know, some of these older experimentations that have kind of, that people know about, but don't really employ anymore. It's kind of like, maybe time to kind of bring them back maybe depending on the case and and what's going on my correlate my idea about the correlation always had to do with the fact that if we did two or three of them from different locations we were all using the same piece of equipment right and then i and then i thought after a while it was like well you know <laughs> does it really make any difference Really, and and then we tried it different ways, and that's when Nick brought in the Gensfeld, and then Chris Carr from up in Rhode Island, he did a whole session with this, with us, 
And that's when my timer, my phone quit working and I ended up doing a double S anesthesis method for 45 minutes. Wow. Yeah. And I, and I can tell you, no, that's exhausting. I, yeah. No, it's not, it's not even close to anything. You know, I think I'd rather stick my finger in an electric socket. Oh, don't say that. That might be worse. No, it, no. <laughs> <laughs> that might be a little worse. <laughs> it, it was like I was I wasn't right for like five days. Oh, I oh, all all that energy expended, you know, and and then for the energy for the spiritual energies as well. One question I forgot to ask you. Um, I know Lisa Crick uses a standard set of headphones, and I off the top of my head, I can't remember the name of them. What are the types of headphones that you prefer for Estes? Because I well, imagine noise canceling well that's not recommended really for any no, audio it is it, it is well, it noise is can the estes. noise there's a different not noise can not strict noise canceling there's a there's a term and i'm thinking oh gosh i'm blanking on it the the specific headphones that she uses and there's a certain decibel where it doesn't oh man it's on her site ghostly voices i have to go on and and read it i, but, um, I had talked to her at ashmore estates she uses a certain about, set. About some of it when we were there in the spring, or maybe it was last fall. And uh, there there was a pair that we were talking about. And lately, believe it or not, Menards has a pair, has these. And they're like for construction. Okay. But they're noise canceling, and you could hook them up the same way. And I don't have that name down here anywhere. I thought I had it. I'm sorry about that. Because I think it's, it's, uh, it's, I know that her preference is recommending getting ones that block external noise up to, I think it's like 25 decibels or something like that. So I don't know what yours block, but the, these are, these are Cohen's. Oh, okay. And these, okay. These are like eighty-five bucks, something like that. Not bad. Not now, bad. Now, what you the people have to take into consideration too when they do this is how many people they let use their equipment. And you know, number one, you know, you talk about boxes, and I don't know if you remember Jeff Resman. I do. Okay. He was the one that has taught me considerable amount pertaining to my respect and my connection with my box and my guides Fantastic. and what you need to do. And, you know, it's like your telephone, you don't you don't hand it out to everybody. So I actually have out of my boxes, I have an extra box, an S box that if I get on a location and we got other people that are going to do this, I sacrifice my headphones because there's so many different big heads. Okay. I, it was a bit, it, <laughs> no, it was I get, no, I guess true though. I mean, it's, yeah. all, it's and, totally and, true. And, and I ended up already going through another set of these because they broke. Yeah. But nobody, you know, they just end up on the table and they're broken. Well, you, know, you know, when you have cats in the house, they break because, you know, the wires get chewed. Let's see. I've gone through at least three of those. I've learned my lesson, though. Now I put them safely where they belong. <laughs> in a drawer somewhere. Exactly. Under lock oh and key gosh. with the cats. Yeah, thank you. Exactly. So we have a few minutes left. Uh, any upcoming events that you want to promote? Get your website, socials out there. Uh just just the straight fact uh, of the two shows really. and when are so uh, yeah the times and dates that they're on for in case anyone okay, listening doesn't uh, know metaphysical metaphysical crossing is on and they're all both on the shadow hunters paranormal investigations and events and right on page. and they're on there and the first one is on wednesday it's metaphysical crossing both of these shows start at eight o'clock central time. Okay. They usually run for an hour. My shadow hour sometimes runs a little longer just because I enjoy talking. 
especially when I have a real talented guest like yourself on there. Oh. It's, 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 it's neat to talk to you. Thank you. I, <laughs> oh, that makes me smile. <laughs> well, no, likewise, likewise. And you know, that's, that's what it's about, you know, and that's why we're here and we're here to help and we're here to try to teach. And sometimes, you know, it gets a little hard to do that. But, you know, uh, something happened today. And it had to do with where I was at. And as far as my ups and downs on my daily basis between my meditations, and it was a reminder. And I had to go back and take a moment and thank them for everything that's gone on so far. It's not me. You know, I'm just an old sports guy that's got four grandkids and I'm a musky fisherman and I don't make too much sense. So, you know, besides that, you know, it's like we try. Give yourself credit. Give yourself more credit. It's, Give yourself it's, it's, more credit. It's it's the way it's the way it is. You know, I, uh, you know, as far as as far as all these people are concerned, when you really th think about it, you know, it's the people around us that make us. That's very true. Yeah, associating with those that you know, kind of. Not kind of, but okay. That set of head, security. That set of headphones is called Lucid, L U C I D. They were available at Menards. If you, I don't even know if you have Menards out there by you. Menards is similar to, oh gosh, I'm blanking. They had a whole, they had a whole, they had a whole, yeah, they had a whole ton of these and they were closing them out. Oh, and they were, they were again. like 80, 85. $200 headphones and they're closing them out for like 30 bucks. Wow. And this is two, two, three weeks ago. Fantastic. And I haven't got to them yet, but it would be a good thing to get because then you could have a throwaway pair. Yeah. Or in case, you know, an extra one in case your cat chews the wire, you know, <laughs> I'm glad you, you know, have you been really busy? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, you know, like everyone else. So but um, I'm glad I'm glad your paracons coming up. Yeah, I wish, the hell, I wish the hell I could get out there, but I don't think I can. Yeah, I know it's it's great. It's Anaheim's first paracon. Uh, it's organized by Henry San Miguel. He's going to be a yeah. guest on Haunted Voices Radio sep Friday, sept September 23rd. We'd love to have you as well on Haunted Voices Radio. So we'll I'll get okay. with you on that and we'll schedule. I can't thank you enough for coming on tonight. This was an amazing discussion mm -hmm. on on ITC and the SD's method. So, you know, fantastic. and there's, there's so many people out there that are 10 times more advanced than I am. You know what? We're all in this together. We're all, you know, we are all in it together. I mean, and, we're you know, all we have trying ways, to learn. Ways, we all have ways of judging it. And sometimes I talk too much. Well, then, and then don't compare either. You're on your own path, just like I right. am. And it's right. it's when we get into that comparison mode, that kind of, and I'm speaking from my own experience, it can get us into trouble. So, but um, you're doing Sorry. fantastic. You're making a lot of contribute uh, contributions to the field. So continue doing what you're doing. Got it. We got to end the show in about a minute here. Thank you so much, Greg. I'd love to have you back oh, on. You. We'll get you back on haunted voices for sure and then let's see next week if all goes well i'll be talking with jeff davis and the cast of alaskan killer bigfoot which should be an interesting show because you know it's kind of nice to talk about the furry guy once in a while so <laughs> anyways hope everyone has a fantastic weekend stay safe and healthy out there and we will see you next week all right have a okay. good night guys next